Keen eyes fixed on a flying target. A gleaming arrow set against a rawhide string. A strong bow bent almost to the breaking point. And then... Straight arrow. Nabisco Shredded Wheat presents Straight Arrow, a new thrilling adventure story from the exciting days of the Old West. To friends and neighbors alike, Steve Adams appeared to be nothing more than the young owner of the Broken Bow cattle spread. But when danger threatened innocent people, and when evildoers plotted against justice, then Steve Adams' rancher disappeared. And in his place came a mysterious stalwart Indian. Wearing the dress and war paint of a Comanche, riding the great golden Palomino, galloping out of the darkness to take up the cause of law and order throughout the West comes the legendary figure of Straight Arrow. Boys and girls, how would you like to own a beautiful golden Palomino Colt? The son of the mighty horse Straight Arrow rides on our new radio program. You might be the very one to win, and we'll tell you more about it later in the program. First, a word to the boys. Are you high man on your baseball team? And you girls... Are you always leading the race when you're roller skating with your gang? If you want to be in front all the time, you need plenty of energy. Energy spelled Nabisco for Nabisco shredded wheat. Yep, a big bowl full of Nabisco shredded wheat for breakfast, plus plenty of fruit and milk, will not only start you off right, it will help give you a head start on the other kids. Because Nabisco shredded wheat is made from real whole wheat. And believe me, that means real energy in every spoonful. Tell Mother you want to keep ahead of the crowd. Ask her to get a box of Nabisco shredded wheat today. And now... Straight Arrow. The route of the Sawbuck stage line between Flint Rock and Calvados runs along the flat prairie then through a steep cut in the Sangre Cristos Mountains. The mountain road begins only a dozen miles from the ranch house of the Broken Bow cattle spread. It's a hot afternoon, and Steve Adams, owner of the Broken Bow, and his friend, Packy, are out hunting strays. As they come around a jutting shoulder of rock, Steve Adams calls a halt, his keen, dark Indian eyes under the brim of his Stetson, sweeping over the buffalo grass and the foothills of the Sangre Cristos. Oh, son. Oh, boy. Oh, oh. Well, no sign of those strays around here, Packy. Reckon they must have drifted some other direction. Can't see hiding a hair of them. You can't, eh? Now, Steve, you mean a scrunchy old placer miner like me's got better eyes than straight error? Packy, I told you dozens of times, don't call me by that handle. Oh, why not? That's who you are right enough, straight error. The mysterious Comanche Indian that rides that big Palomino horse. I'm not riding him now. As far as everybody's concerned, I'm just plain Steve Adams, cattleman. Everybody except me, Steve. But don't fret. I only call you straight arrow when we're alone. All right, Packy, never mind. You were saying something about my eyes. Yep, so was. <laughs> I spotted a cloud of dust that you didn't. <laughs> See it yonder up there in the foothills? I saw it a long while ago, Packy. You did? Yep, and it's not our strays. It's a sawbuck stage for Calvados. That dust is moving right above where the trail ought to be. Ah, oh, shucks. And I figured for once I'd outsmarted you. Yep, it's a stage right enough. We can't see it, just the dust, but... Packy. Huh? What's biting you, Steve? It stopped. Well, what if it has? Maybe it sprung an axle or broke a trace or... Gee, how's the fact, Steve? Shoot! Yeah, Packy. I reckon what stopped that stagecoach is a holdup. Come on, prod up your pony. We gotta get there pronto. Hit up, old son. Led by Steve Adams, the men swung their mounts up the rocky trail that coiled like a snake between the rising cliffs of stone. Above the sound of hoofs, they could hear the rattle of gunfire as they urged their horses onward. Then the shooting died down. They burst out into a clearing on top of a rise and saw the stagecoach. 
One man lay unconscious, sprawled across the boot. Another man, the driver, was kneeling on the blanket seat, firing across the top of the coach. Whoa, whoa there. Driver, which way did they go? Yonder, mister, down over the boat. But he's gone, no sense wasting We'll have a look, see. Get up there. Oh, 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 there. Oh. Hey, Jenks. Hey, Jenks, wait up. No sign of him, huh? That's what I figured. You're the driver? Yeah, my name's Murdoch. Been driving states for the Sawbuck for three years. Anybody hurt? I noticed that other gent wasn't doing much stirring around. Lacey? Oh, he's all right. Got clipped by a ricochet. He's coming around. What about your passengers? Not hauling any passengers this trip. All we was carrying was some Wells Fargo securities. That's what that honorary sidewinder was after. Blast his hide. Drew down on us before we could make a move. Then he ambles up calm as you please and gets the securities. Knew right where they was. He knew where they were, huh? Yep. And there was something mighty familiar about that hombre. I could swear I'd seen him before. He was masked? Sure. Stetson pulled down and wore a handkerchief. But even Here, so... Here, just a minute. Huh? What's that? What? Right at your feet. Well, I'll be dog. Steve, it's your knife. A Bowie knife. Yeah, Pecky. Lying right here on the trail. Hasn't been here long. It's clean and shiny. Wait a minute. There's a name on the handle. Murdoch! Murdoch! What happened? Old Hank get away with his stuff? He did, Lacey. But maybe he won't get far. This gent just found his Bowie knife. Mister, what's the name on that knife? It's Randy Culver. Randy Culver? Murdoch? Yeah, Lacey. That sure ties in. I knew I'd seen him before. Honry little polecat. So he'd rob his own outfit, would now, he? Now, just a minute, Murdoch. Back trail there. I don't savvy. This, uh, Randy Culver works for the Sawbuck stage? He does, mister. In the Calvados office. And you think it was him? Mister, we're plum positive. Yeah, it all figures out, stranger. Young Culver knew we was carrying them securities, and he can use them. His mother's sick, needs cash for a trip back east to get operated on. Yeah, but I never calculated that little squirt to try to get it this way. Well, one thing, sure. We'll pick him up easy. You will? How? I'll bet gold as to a cactus plant. Culver headed straight back to Calvados, just as innocent as you please. Uh, mister, give me that knife. Lacey and me are driving on to Calvados. Packy, let's amble along with him. I'm kind of curious to see this Randy Culver gent. <laughs> Several hours later, just at twilight, the Sawbuck stage rolls into Calvados and pulls up in front of the company office. Steve Adams and Packy drop off their ponies at the hitching rail and follow the stagecoach men inside. A kerosene lamp hangs from the ceiling, casting a yellow glow on the small room. And behind a desk, a tall young man looks up as they enter. Well, Murdoch, Lacey, howdy. Stage is late. You have any trouble? Yeah, Culver. We had trouble. And I reckon you know all about it. Here. Is this yours? Hey, that's my knife. Where'd you find it? Well, where do you think? Up in the Sangre Cristos. Right where you dropped it after you robbed the stage. Robbed the stage? Now, look here, Murdoch. Murdoch, uh, maybe we ought to search his desk. It'd be just the kind of slick trick it'd pull. Hiding them Wells Fargo securities right under our noses. Good idea, Lacey. Calvert, stand away from that desk. Well, sure, sure. But you're heading up the wrong trail. I would... Murdoch... Here they are, right in the bottom drawer. Well, Culver. Well, I, I don't know how they got there. I, Lacey, I... go call the sheriff. No, no, you can't. My mom's sick. You can't. Call the sheriff, Lacey. Don't move, Lacey. Don't oh. nobody move. Here, Culver, put on that gun. You keep out of this, stranger. None of your affair. Put your hands up, all of you. You're not leaving, Culver. Keep your hands off your guns, Murdoch. I'm warning you. Try and stop me. If it's gun smoke you want, then you get me. Steve, look out! He's gone. Come on, Steve. Steve, wait. He smashed the lamp. The place is on fire. Never mind him. We'll catch up with him later. Put the fire out of the whole dang office. We'll burn to ashes. It took a few minutes for the poor man to subdue the flames started by the broken kerosene lamp. By the time they got outside, a crowd had gathered, and there was no sign of Randy Culver. Randy? Where's my son, Randy? Excuse me, ma'am. You're Mrs. Culver, Randy's mother? Yes. Where is he? What's happened? Ma'am, I'm afraid your son is in a heap of trouble. Trouble? Randy? Oh, no. Oh, yes, Mrs. Culver. Me and Lacey here can attest to that. Your son tried to rob the stagecoach. Not Randy, no. Where is he? He got on a horse and skedaddled while we was putting out the fire. 
Mrs. Galva, your son's an outlaw, that's what. Oh, please. Randy'd never do a thing like that. He'd never... Murdoch, that's enough. Oh. Ma'am, you're not well. Oh. Packy, lend a hand. We gotta get Mrs. Culver back to her home. Oh, I sure thing, Steve. Now, ma'am, don't you fret now. Now, everything will be all right. The widowed woman lived in a small bare shack at the end of the narrow main street of Calvados. Steve and Packy led her there, made her comfortable, and a few minutes later went back to the hitching rail where they had left their ponies. Uh, sure is too doggone bad. A nice woman like that and her son has to be crooked. Reckon he'll get away, Steve? I don't know, Packy. They sent a posse after him, but he had a good start. It's mighty dark. But we can find him, Packy. We? Well, Steve, this ain't any of our concern. I think it is. And the sooner we get to Sundown Valley, the better. Sundown Valley? Steve, do you mean... Yes, Packy. Sundown Valley in the hidden cave. It's time for me to hit the trail as Straight Arrow. A short distance from the broken bow cattle spread lay Sundown Valley. And in it, a weather-beaten mine shack which stood at the entrance to an apparently deserted mine shaft. But the mine shaft is not deserted. Within, through a secret entrance known only to Steve Adams and Packy, lies a vast subterranean cave. The walls of the cave glitter with crystals of gold. From some unknown source comes light that spreads a shimmering gleam everywhere. As the two men enter, a great golden palomino tosses its head and whinnies eagerly. Steady, big horse. A Comanche bow and Comanche arrows hang on the wall. There's Comanche war paint and Comanche garb. Quickly, Steve Adams changes, and in a moment... Steady, great stallion. Steady. Stand ready. This is your master who speaks. This is... Straight Arrow! A clatter of hoofs in the vast vaulted cave. An Indian war hoop that rings from the glittering rock. Out into the night gallops the great golden Palomino. And riding bareback, clad in Indian garb from head to toe, Straight Arrow on the Trail of Justice. Faster, great speed to Calvado. Faster! about Straight Arrow in a minute. And remember, in just a few minutes, we're going to tell you more about how you can win a beautiful Palomino Colt, son of the famous stallion ridden by Straight Arrow. Right now, let's try our hand at a little arithmetic. The way I figure it, there are 14 hours between your evening meal and next morning's breakfast. Right? And that means you need to eat more for breakfast. That's why Nabisco shredded wheat is tops to start off the day. Pure whole wheat with nothing added, Nabisco shredded wheat gives you plenty of stick-to-the-ribs energy. Set you up fine for that baseball game at recess. And say, tell Mom that she won't have any trouble getting you or the rest of the family down to breakfast once she calls out that Nabisco shredded wheat and sliced bananas are on the table. Yet those crunchy Nabisco shredded wheat biscuits, swell with milk and sugar, are extra fine topped with a layer of fruit. A one-dish breakfast, I'd call it. And one way of having everybody saying good morning and meaning it. When you say shredded wheat, be sure it's Nabisco shredded wheat. The real, the original shredded wheat. Look for the picture of Niagara Falls on the package. Look for Nabisco shredded wheat at your grocer's tomorrow. <laughs> Once again, Steve Adams' rancher has disappeared. And in his place has come the legendary figure of the Comanche Indian known as Straight Arrow. Now, now in war paint and Indian garb, a Comanche bow slung over one shoulder and over the other a quiver of arrows, Straight Arrow travels through the night with his friend Packy beside him. Until, in the moonlight, they see in the distance the sleeping town of Calvados. Oh, great oh. Steve. Oh. Oh. My friend, 
From here, we must go as quietly as the prairie wolf. The house of Randy Culver is on the far side of the town. Uh, but what are we going there for? We was there early this evening. As Steve Adams, Packy. Now it shall be Straight Arrow who will speak to Randy Culver. Uh, but he ain't there. He will be there. Come, my friend. Up, great Steve. Circling the town, Straight Arrow and Packy rein up in the draw not far from the Culver home. Then, leaving Packy with the horses, the Indian slips silently into the shadows. A few moments later, he moves quietly toward the door of the house. Inside, Mrs. Culver is talking to her son, the fugitive, Randy Culver. Yes, Mom? I know you're near frantic for cash to send me east so that I can be operated on. Randy, son, did you do it? No, Ma, I swear I didn't. I don't savvy how my knife got up there on the trail. I lost it two days ago. And as for how those securities got in my desk, well, I don't savvy that either. But I didn't do it. What in thunder? An arrow. A Comanche arrow. Do not be alarmed, my friend. That arrow is mine. Injun, who are you? What do you want? I opened your door quietly as you spoke. I am your friend. Men call me Straight Arrow. Straight Arrow? Injun, I've heard of you. You help out those in trouble. I beg of you, help my son. He didn't do this. He's innocent. Straight Arrow knows. When there is a crooked trail, Straight Arrow knows. But, Culver, you cannot stay here. Already three men approach. I saw them from the darkness. Three men? Mom, it must be the sheriff. Listen well. You will go up into the Sangre Cristo Mountains. Yes, yes, into the mountains. You will stay there until I come for you. But how will you find him? I shall find him. But he must trust me. Already there is a reward posted for his capture. The sooner he... So, the call of the wolf, that is our signal. The men who would capture you are very near. Go, Culver. But what about you, Straight Arrow? They shall not capture me. Go. Go at once. Sheriff. Yeah. Here's the Culver Shack. But if you ask me, this here's a waste of time. Right, Lacey? Yeah, Murdoch. Culver won't be there. Yeah, maybe not, gents. But I want to talk to Mrs. Culver anyhow. Come on. She might have some idea where her son is. If she does, she won't tell us. Well, even so... After all, Murdoch, didn't you tell me you got another Wells Fargo shipment in a couple of days? Yeah, day after tomorrow. A hundred thousand. What of it? Plenty. If Culver's still loose, he might try for it. <laughs> Nary a chance. Me and Lacey will be ready for him this time. Here, here we are, Sheriff. Here's the Culver place now. Get to one side. What in places? An engine. One side. That engine. He jumped right up out of the brush. Where'd he go? I don't know. He hightailed past us faster than a spooked antelope. Hey, there he goes. Um, Paladino, faster. Jump and catch the sheriff. Did you hear that? He's got a Palomino horse. That means... Yeah, there's only one hombre with a coyote like that. Gents, that engine was straight arrow. But I don't savvy. What's he got to do with Culver? The next day, just at twilight, Straight Arrow located Randy Culver in the Sangre Cristos Mountains. They made camp and stayed there overnight. And in Calvados, on the following morning, a short while after Murdoch and Lacey drove out of town in the stagecoach, Packy sauntered into the office of Sheriff Ferguson. <laughs> Morning, Sheriff. You call me, Packy? Yeah, howdy. What can I do for you? Uh... Uh, you still got a reward out for the capture of Randy Culver? Yeah, mister, 500 cash. What about it? Oh, nothing. Except yesterday when I was on my way back to Broken Bow Cattle Spread. Uh, that's Steve Adams' ranch. Never mind Steve Adams. What about Culver? Sheriff, he's up in the Sangre Cristos. What? Mister, are you sure? Sartin sure. I caught his trail yesterday. Caught a glimpse of him. And that ain't all, Sheriff. There was an engine with him. Looked like a Comanche from the war paint, riding a giant Palomina. Straight arrow. 
Huh? Straight arrow, that's who that is. The two of them, huh? Most likely in cahoots and... By thunder, the stagecoach. It just left. It's carrying 100,000 in Wells Fargo securities. And with those two up there in the Sangre Cristos... Kincaid, Shorty, Desert, uh, yeah. get Come your guns and saddle up. Uh, trouble. Plenty trouble. Culver and Straight Arrow, both of them up in the mountains. And the stagecoach heading that way now. We got to get up there pronto. <laughs> A few hours later, as the sun climbed over the Sangre Cristos, Murdoch and Lacey drove the stagecoach up the first slope of the mountain trail. In the distance, still well behind them, came the sheriff's posse and Packy. And in the mountains themselves, on a high crag from which they could see the stagecoach as well as the distant posse, two men sat their horses. One of them was Randy Culver. The other, Straight Arrow. Straight Arrow, there's the stagecoach. And yonder comes a posse. But I don't savvy what you're up to. In a moment, Culver, all shall be clear. That stagecoach carries 100,000 in Wells Fargo paper. Much more than the 10,000 you were accused of trying to steal. Hey, the stage. It stopped. Yes, my friend. And now it is time for us to go. Quickly, down the mountain. We must show ourselves to the posse. The posse? You mean let them see us? Yes, they must see us. Because then they shall come after us. We must make certain they come after us. Up, great stallion, down the mountain. Yes, that's it. Hey! Well, mister, here's the Sangre Cristo, so nary a sign of Culver or that engine. Only thing we've seen is the dust from that stagecoach. Certain of your facts? Uh, dead certain, Sheriff. Culver and Straight Arrow are up ahead there somewhere. I hope you're right. I tell you, if we don't locate them, Sue. Oh. What's in thunder? Hey, Sheriff, uh, up ahead, look. It's the engine, and Culver's with them. It's them, both of them. After them. Spur up your ponies. No, no shooting. They're still out of range. Hold your fire and ride. Get up there. Hurry. Hey, 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 hey. Once certain that the posse was on their trail, Straight Arrow turned his stallion up the mountain. Together, he and Randy Culver followed each curve of the trail until ahead of them, they saw the stagecoach standing. Then they stopped. Oh, great steed. Straight Arrow, what do we stop for? The posse's after us. We wait here, Culver. But we can't wait. They're coming, I tell you. Stand your ground, Culver. Trust me and let them come. On galloped the posse up the curving trail, their guns ready watching for Randy Culver and Straight Arrow. Suddenly, they burst into view, and as they did, Straight Arrow threw up his hand in the sign of peace. Halt! Let there be no shooting! Halt! Well, so you give up without a fight, do you? Don't try anything, Straight Arrow. No, you neither, Culver. We do not fight honest men, Sheriff. Yeah, honest men, is it? After Culver here tried to rob the stage... Culver did not rob the stage... Look ahead, there in the distance. There is your stagecoach. And if you look closely, you will see the men who are responsible. What in blazes you talking about, Straight Era? We can see the stage, all right, with Murdoch and Lacey beside it. But even so, what... Hey, what in tarnation... Yes, Sheriff. You see what they are doing. They are opening the Wells Fargo strong box. We're doggone to think. They are the criminals, Sheriff. Randy Culver's knife was stolen from him, planted by them beside the trail. The securities that were found in Culver's desk were also planted. I gravy, I savvy now. Murdoch and Lacey did so that they could get a bigger haul this time and put the blame on young Culver. Yes, Sheriff. You see them? They're cashing the valuables beneath a rock. I see them, the ornery skunks. All right, Jim. One moment, Sheriff. I have a better plan. Murdoch and Lacey have not seen us. Bring your posse back to Calvados. Let us go to your office and wait. comes Murdoch and Lacey now. Heading right here for my office. Quick, you and Randy Culver get out of sight. We shall, Sheriff. Come, Randy, right. behind this door. Now, 
Packy, the rest of you gents. Just set easy like nothing was going on at all. You bet. Sure, sure, sure. Sheriff. Sheriff Ferguson. Stagecoach has been robbed. Well, howdy, Murdoch. What are you and Lacey doing back here in Calvados? You left only this morning. Didn't you hear me, Sheriff? We've been held up again. Yeah, up in the St. Christus. They got the 100,000 in West Fargo paper. Well, I'll be doggone. You don't say. Who did it, Murdoch? Who do you think? Randy Culver, of course. Randy Culver and that straight arrow engine. Well, don't just sit there. Get your horses. Get a posse. We gotta try One to. One moment, uh... Murdoch. What the... Murdoch! It's straight arrow. And Culver! So Culver and I robbed your stagecoach? That is very strange, since both of us have been with the sheriff since noon. Ever since we saw you and Lacey rob the stage yourselves. You saw... You mean... We saw you ourselves, and so did the sheriff and his posse. Lacey, we've been tricked. Hey, watch out! Watch out! Drop them. Drop your guns. Let go of my wrist. You, you ornery redskin. Ah, ah, ah. All right. All right. Here's my gun. Yours too, Lacey. Thanks, straight arrow. Those polecats were quick on the draw, but you sure got them first. All right, gents. Take these two along and put them behind bars. Straight Arrow, I want to ask your pardon. And there's 500 cash reward coming to you for this. No, Sheriff. I have no need for it. Give it to Randy Culver. To me, Straight Arrow? Yes, Randy. Use it for your mother to make her well. And now... Adios, my friends. Mr. Uh, Straight Arrow. Yes, Sheriff. We'll see you again, won't we? Perhaps, my friend. Perhaps you will. But only when danger threatens. When there is injustice. Then you may look for Straight Arrow. <laughs> Wasn't that an exciting story? And wasn't that a terrific stallion straight arrow road? How would you like to have a beautiful Palomino Colt all your own? Well, next week on this program, we're going to tell you more about this wonderful horse. Some boy or girl listening right now may become the proud owner of the most beautiful golden Palomino Colt you've ever seen. This Colt is valued at $1,000, and there will be other valuable prizes, too. So listen in to Straight Arrow next week and hear more about this wonderful contest. In the meantime, remember when you have a morning of good hard work or play before you, pile an extra crunchy Nabisco shredded wheat biscuit into your breakfast bowl. There's nothing like Nabisco shredded wheat, the original Niagara Falls product. It's pure whole wheat made into toasty golden biscuits as only Nabisco can make them. Look for the picture of Niagara Falls on the package and make sure you get Nabisco. N-A-B-I-S-C-O. Nabisco shredded wheat. Hey, Steve. Steve, we're heading for the Cimarron. Watch up. Rustlers, Packy. We're out after a gang of thieving cattle rustlers. And before we're through, they'll come face to face with Straight Arrow. <laughs> Next week, another exciting adventure of the Old West, brought to you by the makers of Nabisco Shredded Wheat. Listen, same time, same station. Ride the trail with... Straight Arrow. This is the Mutual Don Lee Broadcasting System. (laughs) 